Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the podcast. Today, joining me is Sun Ryu. Welcome. And Good Gamer Glenn. Lola. And today, we're bringing to you Rumor Review Gen 9. This will be our first Gen 9 rumor. Uh, actually, it's going to be our first Gen 9 rumor of the year. Hopefully, we're going to see some more. And this is found on 4chan. And before we get started, I just want to stress to everybody, treat all of these as rumors with zero truth. Nothing is ever confirmed until it is confirmed via official sites such as Cerebi.net or through Nintendo's official outlets. And with that, let's get started. So starting off, Gen 9 set in India. I have to say, I kind of like the idea of this. Some people were stressing that India was going to be the next region because of Kaparaja being in Sword and Shield, which was based in the UK, and it couldn't, didn't quite fit. So the speculation was that India would would be the next generation, and I kind of want to see where where this this uh, rumor goes with this. What do you guys think? That actually dives into the point that I wanted to bring up. I was looking at Copper Raja in preparation for this Gen 9 review. It does say in its Pokedex entry that it came over from a region long ago and worked together with humans. So just that fact in and of itself saying that it came from another region just already makes me think, oh yeah, I can totally see it being an Indian region. And then like the fact that you brought up, like it didn't seem like a Western like Pokemon. It's like, yeah. You know, that, that just kind of proves the point a little bit. Like, this was our Gen 9 hint. This specific Pokemon, you know, like, it was just in there. <laughs> okay, so it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to see the Gen 9 especially set in the India. And the Copper Raja, we don't know where he's originally from, but we do know he's from another region. I'm thinking he's either from, like, either from Asia or, like, somewhere else, you know, which is uh, interesting. Starters is a fire steel goat by the name of Guard. A reference to goat and having a sword for a horn in the final evolution. A water ground called Mentakwa, based on the manticore, and a grass flying peacock thing based on the peafowl name Leaf Fowl. These are just the final evolutions, will make sense when you see the starters in April. Starting off, this first part about a fire steel goat kind of triggered something back in my memories of a rumor called Pokemon Lock and Key. And in it, they named an evolution called Capsicorn, which I kind of went with Capsaicum of spicy peppers and Capricorn, which is the goat symbol in the Zodiac. It was a bit on the nose, but this kind of alludes to the same idea of the goat being the next gen fire starter. But as for the rest of this, I'm kind of interested in seeing how they would work the Manticore into a starter, being the fact that the Manticore is more like three or four animals mixed together, if I remember correctly. So it's interesting if I still take for a goat, but he, well, the final evolution of the goat, and then a water ground type for the uh, what? A mana? Mana? Manticore? Yeah, water ground for a Manticore. The grass flying for a peacock. So we have another grass flying type. It does feel very repetitive, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I know the Zodiac has, was it a ram, a goat, or a sheep? I don't remember, like the Chinese one. Because I know that was how, that's how the whole thing has been going so far, right? Like fire starters are based off of the Chinese Zodiac, right? That's what it was. But I, I mean, I would welcome it, a fire steel goat thing type Pokemon, I should say. Sorry, not thing. It's, it's already pretty awesome. Like the fact that they're saying that it has like a sword for a horn in its final evil. Granted, it's true, of course. I was almost expecting a uh, Zacian vibe where it would just carry like a sword or something in its mouth again <laughs> as well. <laughs> No, um, I, I, I got Caldeo and uh, Samurai. Oh, yeah. See, see, that would be a lot better. So it would have like yeah. what? Like, like a center horn as well, right? Then in that <laughs> case. Okay. Um, the other thing, um, the water the water starter, Mentaqua, based on a Manticore. Now, I don't, when I, as soon as I read that name for it, I did not think Manticore. I thought Manta Ray. So I thought it was going to be like another like <laughs> Mantine-like Pokemon instead, right? For a water starter, not not a Manticore. So just 
based on the name alone, it kind of threw me off when the word Manticore came up. I do agree with the fact that I don't know how you're going to mix like the Manticore myth into this game with it being like made off of three different animals, unless they're literally just going to make an animal or a Pokemon, sorry, with um, traits from different types of Pokemon that you wouldn't maybe see together normally or something. Then, okay, fine. That's fine. I, I'll, I'll go along with it. I mean, literally, a manticore is like just basically what? It's like, it's like a lion with a scorpion tail and maybe wings most of the time. So it's it's probably not too hard. I can see why they put in the ground type afterwards. So it probably won't have the wings. Oh, okay. So it's similar to a camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as for the grass flying, let's hope if this one's true, it stays grass flying and it doesn't lose its typing. <laughs> it's flying typing like Rowlet did. <laughs> after on its final evo you know <laughs> but other than that i, I mean if this is true and these are the final evolutions we will have to wait and see the starters in april granted they even show it yeah i also the, the uh the manticore one just gave me a thought so you've got a water ground type and what if like they did with oh, i can't think of the pokemon's name right now the grass water type with the steel worker ability its steel moves get stab of that that ability what if this thing had something similar but like in a poison fashion so that it can have poison moves that deal 50 percent more damage especially right. if it is being based off of a manticore so i must say it would have been better as a water poison type instead of water ground uh the next part expect diamond pearl levels of new legendaries of this game pla will tie in with the new force of natures don't know the names of the new thing, but expect it to play a pivotal role in the Gen 9 games. Now, I like the fact that they're definitely tying in the new games to this. It would feel appropriate to have some kind of connection, seeing that PLA is really just this weird side game that is a pseudo main game. It's coming out in the middle of a, of a gaming cycle, it's not a remake, so trying to figure where that fits is a little difficult at the moment because it hasn't even come out yet, but at the time of recording. And also, you've got, you know, people, so many speculations that they might be connected to Gen 9 somehow, and I like the fact that this person tied it all together in, in such a way that actually me makes it a bit more believable. I feel like if they do tie it in with, like, Legends of Arceus mm -hmm. at least, it might be okay. My only problem would just be like time era. So I, I still think tying it in with uh, Legends of Arceus would, would be kind of a good thing. That way it's like, it's, they're at least not trying to like just, oh, here's Legends of Arceus. That's it. Game done. Like there's no connection whatsoever, unless the only connection they're telling us it is, is for like, you know, the Sinnoh region and that's it. But if it ties into the new game, that would be better. I think it would tie in a lot to the whole other previous rumor we did on the last video or so about the Professor Lavington going to a different region. Mm. And that might be a hint on Gen 9. That would be great. As far as the new legendaries in this game, I don't know what he really means by levels of new legendaries. I'm guessing the amount, right? So are we expecting about around 10-ish new legendary Pokemon? I mean, that's kind of cool. Hopefully they're not too game-breaking, but... <laughs> is this can be a prime part of gen 9. yeah that's interesting the thing is is that i if they're talking about sheer numbers of legendaries that's 14 because diamond and pearl introduced dialga and palkia then you have the three elves so that makes five heatran makes six reggie gigas is seven garatina Cresselia is uh nine you have manaphy which makes 10 fion which is 11 darkrai shaman and arceus is another three totaling out to 14. 14 legendary pokemon were introduced in the original diamond and pearl yeah they, they, they had a huge number it was uh i think it was either the most or the second largest introduction of legendary pokemon in one game and so that said if that's what they're talking about levels of legendaries in this game that's going to be a scary thought however the legendaries in diamond and pearl were also extremely unique and they were more memorable than other legendaries from other games because a lot of them had some kind of story attached to them. You had Dalgia, Palkia, and Giratina. Those three alone had their own stories. But you also had the Darkrai event, which you had to do a bit to, to do. You had to discover the three elves. Reggie Gigas, you needed the three Reggies to actually even get 
Otherwise, he just stands there like a bump on a log. And uh, Manaphy, you actually had to play a different game just to get that in the game. And then you had to turn around and breed it with a ditto to get the Fionn Pokemon. Shaman, you had to hope to get Oak's Letter. Uh, I forgot exactly how you got Oak's Letter in this one. And, of course, Arceus was the was part of the end game, so wasn't it? You needed a special like event item that we didn't get in the West, apparently, to get them. Mm -hmm. If they're talking that kind of level of legendaries, then I'm all for it, because a legendary that has a story to it, that has something that I have to work to get, I'm always down for. I, I don't like getting, oh, by the way, here's your legendary by a delivery guy. I'm like, okay, great. You know, you're going to FedEx me the next one? Post game brings back N and Looker as they both get sucked into this region, along with you having to restore balance from the damage from the main game. Expect to actually win in battles versus the new bad team, but they achieve their main goals. You have to spend post game fixing everything and undoing their work. Won't be a ding dong, the witch is dead situation. It'll be a lot of work. Expect to have a lot of post-game because of this. Now, if this is true, if this rumor turns out to be legitimate, this is going to turn the formula that Game Freak has used for decades, literally decades, on its head. And I actually welcome this because you still get your same story where you are pivotal to the story itself, but you fail. And now you have to spend post-game making things right. I think this is a very interesting perspective to run and would give a lot of replay value for this game, especially as you work to go fix things. I think it makes a big change to what we're usually used to, right? Because like, okay, bad team. We got to stop them from doing what they're doing. And then in this case, it's telling us, okay, so you, they, they actually achieved their goals this time. And then now you just have to <laughs> fix everything up <laughs> and correct what they've been done. I mean, I feel like that's another nice step up from what we've been used to. So I think it'll be a good change. I wouldn't mind either, especially if it's saying like to expect a lot of post game because of this. Like a post game is, I think in a Pokemon game is definitely not 100% needed, but I think it's needed for its longevity, especially if you're not in the competitive scene. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's yeah. not interesting. I wouldn't mind like a dark twist Pokemon thing, but no national decks the deck size is going to be a hefty 659 though roughly 40 of those being legends this includes dlc without dlc expect 20 legends two mythicals barely any kanto references this time around so as a gen one person i'm actually glad to see that they're toning down the kanto thing i don't get me wrong i love my charizard he's my number one will always be my number one but there's only so many times i want to see kanto referenced in games do I want to play it at some point? Do, do I want to play my Gen 1 characters in the, in the new Pokemon game at some point? Absolutely. But I like experiencing the new Pokemon that come out. I like to see what new things they bring to the table. So the fact that Kanto has always been usually the forefront of the last couple of games, I'm glad if this is legit that they, uh, that they do tone it down. 20 Legends though, and two Mythicals, that's nuts. I don't see the reason to have that many legends in any Pokemon game introduced. Or these could, some of these could be returning, they weren't entirely clear. But I never understood the concept of having so many legendary Pokemons in an area. It just, it feels like it takes away from the uniqueness of those, those Pokemon from being, oh, there's only like three or four legendary Pokemon in this region. Cool, I want to go hunt them. There are 20 mythical Pokemon in this region. Do they live in an apartment building? But the fact that they're also talking about potential DLC on this, moving forward, I think all mainline games are probably going to have some form of DLC in it. So this doesn't surprise me that, that someone decided to put this in a rumor. 20 uh, Legends without the DLC in 2 Medical, that's quite a lot. So, unless they're going to be regional form, which I would love, I don't see that many. I think, I'm not expecting at least like 10 to 15, you know, so if not, I know, 5 to 10, so. 2 Medical, yeah, that would be nice. And then, yeah, I'm glad they turned it down on as you're saying, uh, to cancel my friends as well. But I hope uh, Gen 2 will get some more love, because I would love to see more of it. 
and also for the Pokédex to be 659 inches, quite roughly large, larger than a uh, what they call a national deck maybe. I think having the deck size cut at 659. I mean, 659 seems like an odd number, but then again, that's like more than what we originally had for like let's say Sword and Shield, right? Sword and Shield was technically like what 300 ish or so right something like that no i'm pretty sure it was 400 yeah 400. I, was 400. Oh, okay. I mean like 600 is a lot that's like more than half of what we're usually used to right so that's that's gonna be a big game and then if not then you know we'll see how that works and then but yeah i, I think with roughly of it being 40 leg granted they'll give us like those free updates so that you can at least have those pokemon like part of your pokedex or at least available in your game granted if you have the dlc or not that's fine but having to like really hope they don't have to hide them especially behind a paywall then i think 659 is great that, that's a lot of pokemon to deal with and i think that would be great and we don't even know like if this is the the number that they are doing we don't even know like how much the region's original pokemon are gonna be right like maybe they'll have a lot maybe they'll go as little bit as sun and moon who knows right so but 659 that's a lot. I think it's fine. Yeah, DLC, if they do do any paid DLC for new areas, that's one thing. But they've always made it so that new Pokemon were always accessible, provided that you had at least the same working base game. So I think the only time they kind of didn't was with Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, and that didn't go over so well. Because you got 11 new Pokemon in Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon that you couldn't get in regular Sun and Moon. So that's that. But uh, when they when they did it for Sword and Shield, hey, yeah, we've got these, this downloadable content that you can pay for and experience a couple new adventures or just wait for it to drop and get the update and then just have people transfer tr Pokemon to you. You can just trade for them. Still good. And that I'm okay with. That That is that is fair. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. And the last part of this. <clears throat> now, this is the part where I kind of got thrown for a loop. The big special gimmick think Mega Evolution, G-Max, or Z-Moves, is certain Pokemon can change their type to a specific move. 200 base power each move, basically a Z-Move, but has two power points each. But only expect these to apply to ground, electric, poison, psychic, and dragon type moves. Only available during the main game, will not be available online. I don't know, having a move that like changes the typing? is kind of odd i mean if they can that would definitely shake up the competitive scene i think and like giving but it, it because you're giving it like two pp right it's something that you have to use to take up one of your move slots you know like that that sounds like it's not gonna be a good thing well then again it does say it's available only during the main game but eh, that's kind of a waste in my opinion you might as well just share it off with like competitive and then that just leads on to the point again like then now you're taking up one of your move slots for co the competitive scene and it's like now you're down to like that move granted you are using it and then like three extra moves and that kind of sucks honestly but uh if they're leaving it story wise fine go on go on base power might be 200 but that's when you apply to a certain type of pokemon and two having two power point each is not gonna be that great either for the long run once you plan to use it i would i wouldn't even bother using it i would just say maybe test this see how it goes otherwise no skip it i would rather stick to like the other stuff they had you know before like like the dynamax version g max or the mega of a store or even the z move you know? or Something a little crazy, you know, combined like Mega Evolution combined with uh, you know, Dynamax. Be cool. I, I, I saw this line and my brain started to work of how, what they would do with this. I like the fact that if you use a move and your type changes to it, means that you've now got this little ace in your hole in your back pocket where if you have that move, you can change your typing, which means that if your opponent was looking at you going, okay, you've got, for example, let's just use Charizard. It's easy because everybody knows you throw a rock, Charizard pretty much dies to it. But if you were to say use this move and charizard is now a fire psychic type that rock's not going to do anywhere near as much damage as you were hoping for and now you're contending with a totally different set of moves which if you're banking on that type change move you may now get stab on a move that you wouldn't normally and it, having the two powerpoint moves i can understand because you use it the first time 
it now changes your typing, you use it the second time, it's now your stab. And the fact that it's 200 base power, you are going to want to massively limit that. You don't want to be able to spam that for five turns because you can easily sweep if your character's fast enough. This way you've got some, some mitigation and it keeps the balance. But where this whole thing falls for me is where it's not available online. I don't see why Game Freak would introduce a new gimmick and not have it available on online play. It just, it, they're, they're online, their competitive scene is their bread and butter for the most part. You know, they, they hold these competitions every year. They draw a lot of people in. People come up with some weird, funky strategies that seem to work. And this type of gimmick I see working really, really well, but not allowing it in a competitive scene. I don't see that working at all. I don't buy it. This is where the whole rumor for me just kind of fall, starts falling apart. But other than that, I mean, the potential possibilities of this move, I, I, I really would like to see something like this in, in an actual game. But I've always been a sucker for type changing moves like Trick or Treat, Forest Curse, Soak, or even things that'll change your attacks like uh, Ion Deluge, one of my favorite moves that got removed. I do agree with the fact, like, if you have a move like Iron Deluge or something, then that's great. Like, that would definitely shake up everything in the game. And with that, everybody, we're going to go ahead and close out the episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the rumor. What are your thoughts and ideas about what we've talked about today? Feel free to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to us. We'd, we'd love to know that we're doing a good job for you. And hopefully, we will see you again on the next episode. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Alola. Adios.